Hello, I am Rob. And I'm Angie. And, and together, together, we are Twinfinity. Twin we are Twin Flames in Union, sharing our 20-year journey through a series of videos. This is now video number 10, and it's called The Firing. And we won't talk about that yet because it's kind of sad and we don't want to go there yet. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to do a quick recap. First of all, the last video, uh, we have been missing date nights. <sighs> yeah. That's what we were talking about because uh, I'm all busy at work and we're not 100% connected. So yeah, the odd date, date night is going by and eh, we miss it. But we're still catching a lot of them too, but not every one like yeah. we had originally wanted to. Angie has also been really doubting our connection. Yes. I haven't been yet. I just think it's just tough times and we'll get through it, as annoying as it has been. And also, as we're coming home from the mountains, we hear the Wilson Phillips song, <laughs> Release Me, and I questioned Angie whether or not that's what she's really wanting me to do or asking her to do. And I didn't answer you. No. 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 I didn't have the guts. <laughs> Tonight, we are in our living room, and we have, we've got a south-facing window. We've, been, we've done one video from this window before, but we were trying the west side of it. In between us is what we call our Charlie Brown tree. It's just a little <laughs> tree. It's not a spruce tree or anything like that, but it's what we have decorated up for this year. Yes, and there's a reason why we're using this. It's actually just a plant that sits in our house all the time in this position. Um, the real truth is, though, I'm just really not in the Christmas spirit this year. I've already done a post about that. Uh, Rob, in fact, we were just last night. We're at the mall. I'm doing everything I can. We're doing our downtown walk that we always do, and we're looking at the Christmas lights and going to the mall where all the Christmas stuff is. Not even to shop, because we don't do gifts. We... We don't need stuff. She thinks we don't do gifts. Oh, really? Okay, well, that's fine. You think we don't do gifts. <laughs> Exit that's, stage left. That's another whole story, apparently. <laughs> the fact is, back to the little story, I'm just not into the Christmas thing this year. I can't get there. So I didn't even feel like pulling out the real tree this year. So um, because we're hosting Christmas, we're actually having people over. I felt I at least had to do something, so this is the best I could do. I pulled out some lights and I put them on our regular, normal tree. I was worried about our little tree, like it's it's. Well, it's like kind of sagged all down right now because the lights the most, are heavy. It's not the most robust tree. I was no. afraid there was bits and pieces of it that are going to break off. But Angie's done a great job. There's lights there and there's little ornaments once in a while, and, and uh, it's very sparse, but it is our tree. And the fact is, those two hearts that are in between us are actually always there. They're just normal things so they're not even regular ornaments you can maybe see if I move oh, yeah. there's another heart over there oh. see I did oh. add did you see I well, added I added break. a few little hearts I, I really have troubles with my telestrator I always that was pretty good <laughs> so um this is the best it's gonna get this year because I just I can't pull it together for some reason so anyway um this is us in our living room the reason we're doing this video in front of our Charlie Brown tree as we're calling it is because not only because it's Christmas now in uh, 2017, but because our story, part of it takes place at Christmas time too, back in 1997. We, so get, we, we get parallel yeah, timelines Yeah, 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 yeah. So 20 years later, we're still at Christmas time. So we thought it seemed appropriate to be in front of our sad Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> Why don't you talk about the topper? Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. This... I tried to do this in our video when we were talking about angels and when I saw my first angel and our first video uh, didn't work at Mercury retrograde. You get used to these things and you just move on. So our second time when we did the video, I completely forgot to talk about the angel. So it's appropriate to talk about her now. This angel was actually given to me by one of my friends that I met. If you remember when we shared of when I first moved into the apartment that Rob and I lived in back in 1997, the day I moved in, I met this lady in the elevator and we became friends from that day on. After I had my first angel experience of seeing this angel, um, I was looking through all the stores trying to find a figurine or something to represent her just to validate that I truly wasn't crazy, which I know all of you understand that whole crazy feeling that we doubt ourselves. I could not find anything. 
Christmas time comes around back in 1997. My friend gives me this angel as a gift and said, I was not allowed to leave the store until I bought this for you. I was blown away when I unwrapped it because it was very, very similar to the angel I had seen. Of course, not all the pretty little light lights and stuff. Lights and well, she was pretty lit up. But it doesn't have all the little strands up there, beads, not that you can really see those so well in the video anyway. Um, so it's just really kind of cool. So we needed her in this video too, just to share about that experience of how I hadn't even told her what my angel looked like. And she went out and found something that validated exactly what I saw. So totally neat. Also, just on a little weather note, uh, there's a little stripe of light that basically just goes right between us. What it is, is we've got the valley on the far side of us and the odd mountain back there, which you won't be able to see because it's going to be turning dark as we're doing the video. Yeah. But the, the top half is actually all cloud cover. We have a little bit of a Chinook arch. We call this weather phenomenon a Chinook, where we get a solid line of clouds right off the mountains. What it is, is it's westerly air that is being pushed over the mountains that's running into the Arctic air that is on the prairies where we are. And it creates a very defined arch, like a very sickle-shaped cloud that is anywhere from, oh, 40 to 100 miles long. And we can see the edge of that cloud right behind us, and it's just leaving a little bit of gap of light as the sun is setting for the sunlight to come through between the edge of the cloud and the ground. And I'm uh, laughing because Rob's so funny. Oh, I, He's I, Mr. I, Weatherman. I, I love weather bits. <laughs> I, I should have maybe gone into that for a living, totally but I didn't. Have. Yes. So now that we're like six minutes into our video and we've really said nothing, we'll maybe get started on, you can tell we're already dreading this story. Should we talk yeah, about that now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, we're going to be nine minutes in before we really get started. Uh, somebody had noticed last video that we looked a little bit stressed and I felt it was necessary to comment about that. Uh, it is not easy listening to Angie talks sometimes and also to relive some of these memories yeah. that we went through 20 years ago. It is hard. It really, it really pulls hard on the emotions and it's really sometimes hard to pull it together and still have a smile on our face and just tell a nice little story because mm -hmm. there's times when it's just not a nice little story. There so were sad times it, we were going through. It's, it's stressful yeah. and, and the stress is not transmitting into our lives now, but it still is, uh, sad and it's tough to deal with internally. Sometimes we have to shake it off when we're done a video for a few minutes and then step right back into our realities as opposed to the sadness and hurt and torment. Yeah, it's just that a we lot to remember. Even this morning <clears throat> when we were briefly talking about doing this video, we talked, we talked a little bit about the firing part. And as, as we were laying there in bed just before getting up talking about this, we were both shedding a tear. We were. This is, <laughs> yeah, to say it for the fifth time, it's just not easy to relive all those old emotions. So anyway, yeah, it's... it's I'm getting teary again you know, just, just having you talk about it. <laughs> if we lose it again this video, that's okay. You see, yeah, uh, yep, well, you'll understand that. Yeah, I'm hoping we don't, mm -hmm. but... I'm already there, so yeah. hopefully I'll pull it together. Okay. Yeah. All right, we get so to start. before Yay. we actually get to the firing, we're going to work up to how we get to the firing. And we haven't even really told you what the firing is, but I'm sure you can figure that out. Okay, so we're back at just kind of after that we've had that um, night driving back from the mountains and we've hear, heard the Release Me song. So it's a couple days later, and Rob, I'm now actually reading directly from my journal. I said, Rob said to me last night, I'm growing at an extremely fast pace. He's noticing changes in me every day. Yeah, it's true. I didn't see it at first, but I started to notice how my thought patterns have changed. About life, death, coincidence, my wants, needs, thoughts, responsibilities, etc. I am changing and growing and evolving very quickly. Wow. The thing is, it just feels right and natural for me. It's not like I'm forcing it. I don't even notice all the changes until they're pointed out to me. I'm where I want to be and the path feels right. It's just like I'm, the changes are making are natural. But in the meanwhile, as she's going through all of those changes, uh, sometimes she'll go through a big one in one day and I'll come home to 
an Angie that is changed. And I, I was really truly thinking that every day or two I was having to relearn who she was because mm -hmm. she would maybe have a discussion with an angel or, or have another realization or a download of some type. We didn't know where downloads were. <laughs> no, but, we didn't. <laughs> but she would get a download and all of a sudden she would be different again. And it was really, really hard to keep track of who Angie was due yeah. to her growth. I had gone through some growth in the past two and three years before that, but I don't know if my growth had been so abrupt. So therefore, uh, I don't think I, in myself, I had really noticed much changes, but to watch Angie go through it, big time. Yeah. All the time. That was changing daily. Like he said, he had to reacquaint himself with me every day when he got home. I was like, who are you again? What have you learned now? So now we're at the point of our story. It's November 15th, and um, we're in Banff, my favorite place in the whole world to be, at a um, manager retreat for Rob's work. Yeah, once a year, especially if where I was working was doing really well, they gather up all of the managers and leave the poor working folk behind to fend for themselves, and we would go out to Banff for three or four days just for a... Retreat. Mm -hmm. A little bit of business, but yeah, a little bit more fun. A just, lot of fun. Just a little bit of stress relief and a chance to break loose, especially right after our year end, which was October 31st. So we are in BAMP, and Angie is my guest for the year. Yes. And you'd think I'd have been happy. I mean, again, I'm in Banff. I'm in my favorite place of the world. It's winter. It's beautiful. The Christmas lights are out. I mean, Banff's stunning any time of year, but Christmas, it's magical there. Maybe that's where we should go and I'll get some inspiration. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going there tomorrow. We're going to tomorrow for breakfast. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So I'm writing in my journal now. Um, it's 3.45 in the morning and I can't sleep again. For the past three nights now, starting Wednesday, I've been having horrible dreams of Dad chasing me and abusing us all, etc. I just woke up from a dream where Dad had taken a round out of my younger brother and now he was after my mom. What am I supposed to be learning now from all of this? Do I ever get a break from all of this? I'm literally just so friggin' frustrated. Like, finally the sexual abuse has left me alone. It's no longer affecting our daily life. And now I got this coming up. And I don't only have it coming up, but on this beautiful weekend where it's supposed to be fun and a retreat. And here I am at, in the, awake at 3.45 in the morning going, what now? So you can tell I'm frustrated as I'm writing all this. So I'm saying, do I ever get a break from all of this? My soul obviously wants to deal with the past and get on with life. But I wish it would just hurry up and do so. So I'm like, enough already. So you can imagine I'm not in a good space as we're um, having this weekend. Rob's still fairly intense because you're still in a busy season of work, even though your year end is over and inventory's over. It's still, still busy from a customer point of view. Still yeah. lots of stuff happening all the time. So I'm, I haven't let my guard down by any stretch. So we're not in a great place together. And as we're checking out of the hotel, and it was a beautiful hotel in Banff, mm -hmm. by the way, just mm -hmm. stunning views. So I wasn't even really even able to appreciate it all because I'm in this place of my past still haunting me. But as we're checking out, do you want to tell that part of the story or should yeah, I? Yeah, there's... <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 guy by, the guy behind the desk refers to us as Mr. and Mrs. McKay, my last name. Yes. And I, I, I cringed because we just not had been doing all that well lately. No. Uh, we weren't I in a place of thinking marriage. I'm in a place of not even thinking about us together in the future. And he's probably in a place of, oh my God, lady, will you get it together? Or, you know what, I'm going to have to toss you. I don't know if you're actually thinking that yet. Yeah, but. I, was, I, 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 I felt embarrassed I, for the poor guy. He made, he made a guess. He guessed wrong. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, really? Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So where are we at now? Oh, yeah, yeah now. Runner again. Oh, yeah, that one. Huh. Uh-oh. No, two journals it. again. Yeah, we're in between two journals, so it gets tricky. So I just wanted to read this um, because it explains where I'm going again, and I'm pulling away from Rob because I'm back in that phase of runner again. Well, not that I've ever really gone out of it, as you've heard from our stories. I'm like, should we be together? Are we, are we not together? I don't know. I don't know if he's the right person for me. I'm back and forth every day. 
Um, and this one we're going to talk more about when we do our tangent talks. Uh, this will be one of our earlier ones that we talk about. But uh, for now, I just want to talk about it as part of our story. So this is November 20th of 1997, and I'm writing that I had a conversation with my head. I said it's scared, so it's going negative. I've been pushing it away, but really, what I need to do is listen to it. It's just feeling out of control now that soul is here and taking a lot of my time. Now, just to explain, it is our understanding and belief that a runner is running because they are scared. They've been triggered by all this love, this intense love, and it's triggering whatever that they don't have healed. And it's our opinion that um, the one that's the higher runner, the bigger, more intense runner, is usually the one that lives in their head. They're very logical, very intellectual. I am very deep in my head. Yes, in all of our stories, we're talking about how I'm connecting with angels and now I'm in 5D all the time. But I've always lived very much in my head because that's the only place I knew how to keep myself safe. In fact, even when I was in counseling, my therapist used to comment about how, you know, I would figure things out and, and understand the logical healing parts, but I wasn't actually healing on a deeper levels because I was so stuck in my head. So we'll, we'll do a video on that later about um, runner chaser stuff. So back to my story as I'm writing in my journal, I said, mind doesn't want to fight against soul. He's just afraid of soul. Mind is having a hard time trusting and believing soul, let alone the whole universe. So again, mind is like, none of this 5D stuff makes any sense. This angel stuff, it's all unreal. You're just crazy. It's interesting to listen to Angie read that out of her, mm. out of her diary. We don't, or we don't let me read this on a regular <laughs> basis. She reads through it. Uh, it's, it's her property. So sometimes when she says something, even right here in the videos, I haven't heard it all before. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to comment that for the past couple of summers before I had met her, it was me out in the mountains learning how to get out of my head and be in some form of conversation with nature or creator or both. And I would have these tug of wars in my own yeah. head going, what am I thinking? Why am I feeling these feelings? Why am I getting these messages? It was my mind and my soul were having this back and forth yeah. two and even three years before I met Angie and now in our story she's going through those <laughs> phases but I don't think that she's talking to me about it because I don't recall her having those struggles I always felt like she was just going head first into it mm, or that's was a it good feet point. first head first that's mm -hmm. almost that's funny that's almost funny <laughs> it is funny <laughs> That's a good point, though. Yeah, we didn't really talk about this because we weren't talking a whole lot at that point. No, and you were just struggling with your own growth and I, not, I was. not talking about it because it was actually scaring me, so you weren't talking much. Yeah, that's true. So I was saying that mind is having a hard time trusting and believing soul, and mind just wants to be heard and validated and accepted and for us to be patient, us being uh, body and spirit. So I'm very much understanding as I'm writing this that I'm like a, sort of a three-part being, mind, body, spirit. And Rob and I had had many conversations about that when we first met and we're having all this soul experiences. So it wasn't new for me to be talking about mind, body, and soul, but I was, it was new for me to be having a conversation with my mind and my head. But I probably done it in counseling, which is where I had learned how to do this. All these conversations, like... Many of you have these conversations too, so this is, it's nice to be able to talk about all these conversations that we're having with ourselves in our own heads. Yes, without, we're truly not crazy. We're, we're really not crazy. We understand this. You're, <laughs> yeah. not, you're really not crazy either. Or we all are, and it's okay. We'll be crazy together, but no, we're not. <laughs> so I was just saying, mind needs time to get used to soul, and we all need time to integrate together as a trinity. We're getting closer each day. We are closer to the balance. The reality is I was not close to the balance at all. Let's be real. It's so funny how, you know, I'll read in some of the twin flame groups that, you know, where people are at and where we think we're at, where we perceive, perceive we're at and where we're really at. Very mm. different. I mean, this is in 1997. We didn't come into union until 2014. 14? Yeah. Um, I had a lot of work to do before I got to real balance. So it's funny how we can think we're in balance, but 
we're really not there yet. The more information we tend to get, the more it, more time it takes to you know to sort it, to file it, to mm. feel it, uh, to live it, to re-experience it again, and therefore know where it actually fits mm -hmm. within your soul and within your life. Mm -hmm. It's for someone doing a little bit of growth, it takes not very long to let that growth meld in. Somebody that's blowing themselves apart, it can take a long time. Yeah. We won't discuss how long a long time is. <laughs> yeah, hopefully your long time isn't my long time because my long time was a long time. There will be another video talking about divine timing, timing and how the longer the time frame it is, the divine really has no clue how it affects us. Oh yeah, we're going to share some of those stories. Okay. So I was just saying that I needed all three pieces of me, soul, mind, and body, that were whole only with the balance of those three. So it's interesting, way back then, that I knew this at one level. Um, clearly, I didn't know it at all levels. Or, you know, you can know it, but to do it, it takes time. It's not like it's an overnight thing. Um, so it's interesting that I really was aware that I needed to be whole, and to do that, I needed a balance of all three. So I said, we need to all work together to meet our goals and desires, to grow and love and manifest. Body can manifest, mind can grow, and soul can love. I need to nurture all three parts of me. So I was recognizing that when I was in the runner phase, even though I didn't know I was in the runner phase because we didn't know any of that back then, but when I was scared, it's because I was in my mind, and my mind was going, this stuff isn't real, this is, none of this is making any sense, we just need to stay in our head to stay safe. And my soul's going, no, you need to hear me. So this back and forth conversations were going on, and did I feel sane? Well, at the time I thought I was, but maybe I wasn't so much back then. <laughs> I was wise in some ways, but still very young and immature in other ways had a lot of growing to do. So now we're going to talk about um, December. I was getting to the point where I was hardly even writing in my journal anymore about Rob and I stuff because I was busy um, manifesting. I was learning in Reiki that our thoughts are everything that we think, do, is creating our reality. So I was starting to manifest. Yeah, that's our dog, by the way, playing with the ball that we usually remember to take away from her before we start a video. So if you're hearing this little squeak, it's just her. It's not a bird it's, dying it's, or anything. It's, it's not last week's squirrel. It's the dog. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We had a squirrel last week. That's funny. The world's squeaking at us. <laughs> yeah, there's a message in there somewhere. So anyway, I was doing all this manifesting about Rob and I. Uh, which is also where I was frustrated because I'm thinking manifestation happens instantly. And I'm like, why is none of this stuff happening? I'm doing all this positive thinking about us, and yet we're growing further apart. So that's what also was triggering me to think, well, maybe he's not the one for me. Maybe this isn't right. Um, but I was also manifesting work. I was wanting to be a Reiki practitioner and have my own Reiki business. So as I'm manifesting all that, I'm realizing I'm going to need to learn how to do my own books too. If I'm going to have a bookkeeping or a, a, a business, I'm going to have to do bookkeeping too. So one of the things that I wrote in my journal, and this is October 13th. So this is kind of backtracking a bit, but I wanted to share this now because it kind of fits now. I said, I'll learn how to do bookkeeping and enjoy it. When I was reading through my journals, you know, it's such a gift actually to read. If you have journals, amazing to read back in them. Never thought I would, but it's such a gift. So when I'm reading back and I read that, I was like, oh my God, that is hilarious. Do you know what I do for a living now? I'm a bookkeeper. I have my own bookkeeping business. I actually do have a full-time job uh, doing administration and somewhat nursing, so I still get to keep my nursing registration, but I also own my own bookkeeping business. So that just cracked me up. All these years later, Manifesting really does work. It just doesn't always work in the time frame that we think it'll work in. So don't give up hope. Keep manifesting. It's that divine timing. Work. Yes! They, I, <laughs> I will always say that they have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. So I just had to share that. Now, I also wanted to share it now because it just kind of ties in with um, our next story. Um, is the fact that I don't even have this written in my journal because I was writing so little about us at this point because I was doing so much manifesting. Do you want to talk about our next little bit? Nope, you can start into it and I'll comment. Okay.
<laughs> it's funny, in our normal relationship, I am not the talker. He's way more the talker. In our videos, it's the opposite, which is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It she comes out of some little shell, and I just admire it. I'm like, wow. Wow, she's <laughs> talking. Let her talk. So we had gone probably the beginning of December, we're guessing, to see Titanic. It had just come out in the movie theaters. And um, we decided to go see it because Rob loves history. I don't, but you love history and you were all excited to go see this movie. Sure. Okay. And this movie, I I didn't know what to expect out of it. Mm. Uh, time would show that I would watch it 30 times or 40 times. I've seen it so many times now. I think it's a great version, the Leonardo DiCaprio version of, of uh, Titanic. But that movie... Uh, really kind of tore us apart. It yeah. was a love story with two people who just meet and they instantly hit it off. And there was just a ton of parallels between, yeah, yeah. between them and us. Yes. So the funny thing is we watched this movie. We cried during the movie, both of us. We cried on our walk home. Um, we lived downtown back then, and the movie theater was downtown. So we walked home. We cried as we're walking home. We cried as we went to sleep that night. And then we woke up the next morning, and we cried some more. So that movie just mm. hit us big it time. Tore us apart. And for me, I didn't even really know why I was crying. Um, but looking back, the things that were triggering me were um, now... Forgive me. I mean, this movie's been out 20 years, so if I'm spoiling anything, it's your own fault. I'm sorry. But if you haven't seen this movie now, you're just not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> so when the elderly couple, when the ship is now sinking, and the elderly couple huddle together in their bed and just snuggle together and know that they're about to die. And the water's flowing underneath oh, their bed. Oh. That just broke my heart. And I just thought of us. And I thought, oh, I want that. I want us to be together until we die. Even though here I am doubting this whole thing, there's obviously a part of me still like, no, I want us. I'm clinging to us. And the other part that really hit me was when uh, Jack dies because they have this amazing love. And I'm now thinking, oh, my God, maybe that's like us. We have this amazing connection, but we're not going to make it and we're going to be separated. So, again, I don't think I actually thought those things back then. Maybe I did. I don't know. But looking back, that's the triggers that I had that made me cry so much. You? I just thought it was just a, a really sad story that two people that are obviously just connect so well mm. get, get torn apart so quickly. It's just a sad story. Yeah. And what's really interesting, too, is um, in some of your cities where you guys live, you may have noticed the Titanic was just re-released in theaters for the 20th anniversary. Our little city of a million couldn't, couldn't figure out how to do that. So yeah. we didn't get to go back and see it on the big screen. We can watch it on our little screen downstairs in our basement. But it's not the same. I was hoping oh. to see it in 3D. Like they like when it had been out for 10 years, they came out with a 3D uh, remake. And I wanted to see it again in 3D. But they didn't pull it together for no. us. So we didn't have it. And we were just sad because we really wanted to you know, reminisce and watch it in the movie theater 20 years later. It's, it's so funny that most of our story that we're sharing is about things that happened 20 years ago. Everything is 20 years, 20 years, which I'm sure some of you and even my friends on Facebook are like, oh my God, would you give up the 20 years thing? But the fact is it was 20 years ago. Yeah. So it was, we were kind of sad not to watch the movie 20 years later in the theater. Oh, well, it is what it is. That was though another piece of our story was our Titanic night and we cried and had our little yeah. paper towel fest and <laughs> it, was, it was sad. So next in our story is Christmas. Christmas I, at my parents' place. Yes. They get to meet her again. Yes, for the third time actually because I had met them on in the summer when Rob was like, could I keep Angie for the night? That whole mm -hmm. crazy thing. Then I met them in Thanksgiving and then I got to meet them at Christmas time because we went there for Christmas. And the truth is, I absolutely fell in love with Rob's parents. They're amazing, wonderful people. In fact, can I share the story about their cards? Go ahead. Okay, or do you want to share? No. Okay, he's like, no, you tell everything. I swear I don't talk this much, I promise you, not normally. <laughs> um, 
it's Christmas, so I'm going to read sad stuff in my journal, but I wanted to tell a happy little thing about Christmas there. They're opening gifts, or we're all opening gifts, and they open their cards from each other, and they discover they gave each other the same card, and it was the cutest, most adorable thing. My my parents had a very special relationship, they did. and the only thing I'll comment about the cards is <laughs> they would get each other naughty cards for Christmas. They, they would have to go to specialty stores, and they both chose the same naughty totally. card. Totally. That was my parents. La, this, la, 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 la. It was so cute. funny. They didn't even want to show it to us, but they had to show it to us yes. because they were the same card. Cards, yes. And they're like, excuse the card itself. And it wasn't bad. It was actually just about making out behind the couch. So yeah. it was just so cute. And I was like, oh, God, I want that kind of relationship. Like, the love they had is just amazing. Yes. So anyway, that's a nice happy story in our whole thing. The rest, it's, it's all downhill from here, so mm -hmm. get prepared. All right, so this is December 25th, 1997 in my journal. And I said, we're at Rob's parents' place in Edmonton. I can't sleep. I'm kind of overwhelmed and sick, sick to my stomach. So here I am again, not sleeping, writing in the middle of the night, theme going on. Rob and I talked last night and worked some stuff out from Sunday. He told me about his whole relationship and marriage with his ex-wife. I was really hard to hear some of his stories. Yeah, we were sleeping downstairs at my parents' place, and they have a bunch of photo albums. And I pull out one, open it up, and here it's my, my first marriage, my wedding album from back in 1986. So here I am, I'm flipping through pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a best man, la, 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 there, everything else, and here's where we were, and Edmonton and Spruce Grove and pictures, and fun night, and here's the reception, and yeah, here's, yeah, okay, here's everybody, and I'm not quite realizing that I'm throwing Ange off the deep end. I'm just sharing a story of my you. past. Yeah. It's my past now. And of course, because I'm going through all my ridiculous everything's everything's triggering me and this now triggered me even though i mean he had told me like days after we met or maybe even the first day we met that he was married like it wasn't a big secret or anything but seeing all these pictures now of him with another woman and him happy and our triggers going off all over the place you can only imagine i'm young i'm insecure i'm like oh my god this man's been married and i've barely even had relationships so i'm just back to being a mess. Oh, wait, back? I'm still a mess. Nothing's changed. <laughs> back then, I meant. So then I said, uh, God, I'm starting to really wonder what the hell I'm doing with him. I'm starting to really wake up and evaluate me and us. Am I really with the right person? Here we go again, doubting the whole thing, doubting us, doubting the connection, doubting everything. Runner! Rob showed me pictures last night of him as a kid, racing boats, his wedding, etc. Looking through all that, I felt like I only half know, know him. It's like he's had two lives and I only know about one of them. I mean, he's been married. I'm like, oh. He stood in front of a church and committed his life to a woman. He swore to God that he'd be with her for the rest of his life. It's only hitting me these last few days that this is all really true. I mean, it's not like I never knew about all of this, that he was married. It's just hitting me on a gut level instead of a head level. <sighs> Triggers. See, we Triggers. live through them too. So I wrote, this might take a little time to get over. I can't help but think that Rob and I have a lot of work to do. I keep thinking of counseling and really I want to go as, to get couples counseling with Rob so we can work through and heal our past and be able to live in the present without baggage coming up all the time. He had his own triggers going on, but they weren't near as deep as mine. So that's why I was talking about both of us in baggage, because we both had some stuff going on. So I just said, I just keep seeing a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm so sick of constantly working on something. Both he and I would like to put the page. Like to just be in love. It's got to get easier. It's just got to. So I'm digging deep going, please give me some hope. Oh my Lord, is this ever going to get better? Because all I'm seeing is challenges. And now you can imagine, I mean, as, a, as if I wasn't already pushing him away, I'm pushing him away even further now because now I'm doubting even more. I'm being triggered even more. I've just got so much going on. And I'm really starting to feel all this too. I, I'm at a point now in the story where... 
my patience is running out. All I see is strife and dealing with this and dealing with that. And, and who is she? And she's looking at me going, who is he? <laughs> we are just not really going very far as yeah. far as our relationship is concerned. It seems like it's, it's just can't see through to the end. No. And all we see, if we see through the end, is challenges. It's just one challenge after another. And just when we get through one, there's more. So this is now January 6th of 1998, and I'm now starting to channel angels in my journal. So I'm writing very little about Rob and I, only if it's really, really stressful. And this one was obviously stressful enough that I wrote about. So I said, okay guys, referring to the angels, is this the last bump? Is this it with Rob and I, or will we go through this bullshit forever? Are we actually growing in love, or are we just hurting each other more? What the hell is the point of all this shit? Why do we keep going through it? We've had enough. Is it too much to ask that we just be happy and love and be peaceful? Help me! Now, for some of you that are in the groups and you are write messages similar to this, as you can see, I've been there. Boy, have I been there. This is only the beginning of the yelling at angels that I started to do. <laughs> Their response channeled through me. All they could say was, dear one, you are filled with naughtiness and anger. Open up to love. And I'm like, Ugh, open up to love as if. Just give me some answers. So I was not really happy with the angels, you can imagine. So now I don't even have the next bit written in my journal. We've had to kind of pull this back together out of what we remember. This was our morning this morning in our tears. Yes. <laughs> I had had enough this this needed a break i i had given up on our relationship mm. i invited her up one morning when obviously i wasn't working we think it was a sunday we're not sure that's what memories prove it might have been a saturday but i i agree with her it might have been a sunday i would have needed a whole day to go th to to <sighs> yeah. rehearse this but I invited her up to my apartment and I sat her down at my little table and I often say that I broke out some Kleenex but I was a bachelor. I didn't own Kleenex. Yeah. All I had was paper towel yeah. and I uh, mentioned to her that this relationship wasn't going anywhere and that uh, she had to go. Which is pretty much, in some ways, the same kind of words that I use when I'm talking to one of my employees. I've refined it a little bit over the years, but <laughs> essentially, uh, letting someone go yeah. is letting someone go, whether it's on a personal level or on a professional level. And I was basically telling Angie very kindly, as kindly as I could, that she had to go. She was being... Fired, fired from my life. I was fired. <laughs> I fired Angie. I had enough. The we fact obviously is, obviously weren't compatible. No, the fact is, I was going to say I deserved it because, and let me before I even say I deserved it, let me go back and tell the story from my memory. It's exactly what he did. He sat me down at his table, but he held my hand. He lovingly held my hand. He handed me a piece of paper towel. He tore off from his little roll, a piece of tape, paper towel for him, gave me my piece, held my hand, and probably said something like, you know, I love you, I will always love you, but this just isn't working. Um, I need to let you go. I do remember those words, I need yeah. to let you go. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'm crying, he's crying. Oh, no, we were bawling. Yeah, we were both. It, Titanic had nothing on that day. No, nope. <laughs> and I get teary now just again because it's funny. I mean, even though we're together, like it's still, those were hard That's, times. That, that was, was hard. When you're in love with someone and you just, you, you give up, you surrender, you let them yeah. go to go grow their own life. <laughs> it, it's one thing it's one thing when you agree with someone that you haven't got along for the past five years and it's time to time to just go your own way. But when you've just had magical occurrences <sighs> yeah. and, and you're watching someone go through a massive amount of growth and you realize it's it's 
it's not going to be a relationship. Yeah. Not in its form that it is then. It really, really hurt to let her go. And it hurt to be let go, even though I was wanting it. I mean, you heard from our last story about, you know, the, the Release Me song. Uh, there was a part of me wanting it, and I didn't have the guts to be the one to end it, probably because I didn't want to be the one to cause all the pain and feel all the pain. Um, but obviously there was a part of me that needed to be let go of, but I still didn't want it in, in other senses. I remember going back up to my apartment and just staring out my window and just going, like, what the hell just happened? Like, I was just stunned, completely stunned. And, and thinking, this isn't real, this isn't over. And I even remember asking you, like, can we reconsider? Can we go to counseling? And you were just like, no. no. I've, I've never rehired anybody that I've fired <laughs> until her. <laughs> many years later. Many, many years later. <laughs> yeah, but for now, it was just like, wow, this is really, okay, I got my wish, but I guess I didn't really want it because I don't want this now. I remember when she walked out of my apartment, and this is this is hard to word, but when she walked out, I felt empty. I was I was in an I was in my apartment with my table and my dishwasher and my stereo and my couch, but my apartment was empty when she walked out. I I, I felt like I almost didn't even belong there. Mm. I. That's, I, I was feeling the connection walking out my door yeah. and my apartment could have just been dead empty, just me and nothing else. And I, and I still wouldn't have felt any emptier. And I went home and felt the same way. It just, I mean, like a piece of me had been ripped off of me somehow. It was almost like our elevator experience from yeah. the first day we met. And like a bandaid, except this is like, just rip half of you away. Yeah, so, I mean, it just hurt like hell. I was thinking, she's <clears throat> gone. And so I couldn't settle down with that thought. No, neither of us could. It just, it hurt. As you can see, it still hurts to talk about it. It still brings us to tears. Um, I couldn't do it again. <clears throat> I don't I, want to do it I again. couldn't. couldn't. <laughs> no. 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 It's funny, I wish I could see Cookie right now. <laughs> Our dog, she's got the saddest face right now. Just... <laughs> it's like she's, she's relating to our story. So yes, that is the end of this uh, video. I'm sorry to leave you on such a sad note before Christmas, but... Um... It was right after Christmas. I, as much as I'd had doubts before Christmas, I think Christmas time back then had had solidified my my resolve to let Angie go. Yeah. Christmas oh, and New Year's, because New Year's yeah. wasn't a good time New for Year's us either. New Year's wasn't, wasn't great either. No. It was, it was just time. It yeah. was just time. Yeah. Just as a little teaser for the next video is, is that letting her go and watching her walk away was not the end of our communication. <laughs> as it is with all twins, right? Let's yeah. be real. <laughs> You've all been there. Go away, but call me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Couldn't. I couldn't handle that thought. Neither of us could. So yes, our next video, there's still more of us. Don't worry. <laughs> Even though we're, we're sitting here teary and sad, it's okay. You can cry with us, but have hope. Or at least have hope that we're back together. It's all good. <laughs> you will so, be too again. We'll all get there. So anyway. <sighs> we'll that, leave you with that sadness. Yes, that's the firing. I've... We have Relived to it again. Cry now. Yeah, and time for us to go. Yeah. Have a uh, Merry Christmas. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're going to actually do a separate video for that little Merry Christmas bit. But for those of you that may or may not see it, we'll wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Yule, a Happy Hanukkah, whatever holiday you celebrate. Happy all of them. And I hope we do another video. I think we will. We'll do another one before the new year. Yes, we will. That's a whole week from now. Of course yes. we will. All right, we love you guys. Take care, and remember to connect with your twin. Always go within. Bye.